This aircraft was the most produced and the most versatile medium bomber of World War II. It entered service in the early years of World War II, and it served in every theater of the war. Later in some countries it was used up until the 1970s. So let's see the history of the B-25 Mitchell medium bomber. The origins of this plane reach back to the mid-1930s, when North America created the XB-21 Dragon. The plane was evaluated by the Army Air Corps and they found it a good design, but since its cost was nearly double of the competitor, the Douglas B-18 Bolo, the Douglas design came out as a winner in this competition. Nonetheless, North America got lots of experience from the design. So when the Air Corps issued another specification in 1937 for a new bomber, North America had a new design ready, the NA-40, which implemented the experiences gathered with the XB-21. The specifications asked for a bomber, which would need to be capable of carrying a payload of 12,000 pounds to a range of 12,000 miles, and have a maximum speed above 200 miles an hour. The other competitors were Bell, Boeing Sturman, Douglas and Martin. The Bell company withdrew from the competition early, while Boeing Sturman entered their X-100, Martin their Model 139 and Douglas the 7B model. The NA-40 flew the first time in January 1939 and was found seriously underpowered with its original Pratt & Whitney engines. So in February it was modified to use the right R2600 double cyclone engines. The upgraded NA-40B version with the new engines had a much better performance. However, in April the same year, during a test flight, the pilot lost control of the plane and it crashed. The crew managed to escape, but the prototype was destroyed in the fire. Though the crash was not related to the aircraft design, the Air Corps decided they will order the Douglas DB-7 into production as the A-20 Havoc. The NA-40 turned out to be again just an experience gathering adventure for North American and a stepping stone towards the B-25. But it was not in vain, as in March 1939, with the war looming over Europe, the Air Corps again sent out a circular proposal for new medium bombers to replace the existing models, which were very quickly became obsolete. The new proposal asked for 3000 pounds of payload, a range of 2000 miles, and a maximum speed above 300 miles an hour. This proposal was different from earlier ones, as the Air Corps was in a hurry to modernize its fleet. They decided contracts will be awarded based on specifications, drawings and estimated performance. There was no time for years of test flights. The planes considered for the competition were the Martin B-26, the Douglas B-23 and the North American NA-62, which will become the B-25. The new B-25 utilized the lessons North American learned in the years before and used many features from the NA-40. The tricycle landing gear, wing shape, dual tail and the engines were all carried over. The Air Corps decided to award contracts for both the Martin B-26 and the North American B-25. I have already made a separate video on the Martin B-26, so if you're interested in the history of that plane, please check it out. See the link in the description or at the end of this video. The work on the first B-25 started in September 1939. The armament initially was very minimal, with two 30 caliber machine guns in the nose and the waist gunner positions and a 50 caliber machine gun in the rear. In August 1940 the plane had its first flight without any incidents. The later test flights usually went smoothly, with minor hiccups, like once the nose wheel collapsed, another time mechanical errors forced the plane to land wheels up, but no serious errors were detected, apart from the original dihedral wing design. This wing design caused stability problems on the bomb runs, but it was corrected by flattening the wings upwards angle outwards the engine nacelles, starting with the tent plane. The first planes were built without self-sealing fuel tanks or armor plating. These were added with the B-25A version, but this variant still wasn't considered combat ready, as it still had very minimal defensive armament. The next B-25B version received an improved armament. The tail gunner position was deleted and the top and bottom turret were added, both housing twin 50 caliber machine guns. The C model further improved the armament, introducing two 50 caliber machine guns in the nose and also more powerful engines. This was the first mass produced variant. When the Army Air Force needed a gunship for anti ship operations, 
the XB25G version was developed, which featured a new nose housing two fixed 50 caliber machine guns and a 75mm M4 cannon. The successful prototype led to the B25G production model, which introduced additional armor on the plane and increased fuel supply. The H model raised the bar on the armament even more, now featuring four 50 caliber machine guns in the nose and another four in outside gun pods on the fuselage, plus the 75mm cannon, which was now the lightweight T13 E1 version. The result was some truly amazing firepower, with the 850 caliber machine guns and the 75mm cannon. Also on this version, the dorsal turret was moved further forward. The 75mm cannon on the plane was not easy to aim, but being a tank cannon originally, it could deal with any target. Could even sink or seriously damage the more lightly armored Japanese warships. The final B-25J variant returned to the medium bomber role, after the G and the H gunship variants. This variant received more powerful engines, and it was built with two different nose, the original greenhouse version and the so-called strafer nose, which held eight forward firing 50 caliber machine guns. Together with the four additional machine guns in the side pods and the two in the dorsal turret, this variant could fire 14 50 caliber machine guns forward. I'm planning to release a separate video later featuring the more specialized versions of the B25. But now let's see the technical specifications with the most used age version. The B25 was 52 feet 11 inches long with a wingspan of 76 feet 7 inches. The plane's empty weight was just under 20,000 pounds, while the maximum takeoff weight was 35,000 pounds. The plane used the right R2600 twin cyclone engines, producing 1700 horsepower each. With these engines, the plane could reach a maximum speed of 272 miles an hour and a cruise speed of 230 miles an hour. It had a range of 1350 miles and a service ceiling of 24,200 feet. The B-25 could carry 12 to 18 50 caliber machine guns and a 75mm cannon, depending on the variant. It could carry 3000 pounds of bombs internally and if needed one torpedo externally. The B-25 just became combat ready in early 1942 and were selected for the Doolittle raid. After the attack on Pearl Harbor, the American morale was low but they were eager to hit back, and the public had to see that America is ready for the fight. In this daring plan, 16 B-25 bombers were loaded onto the deck of USS Hornet to be transported near Japan and attack Tokyo. The B-25 was selected from a range of bombers, because it had good flight characteristics and enough power to take off from a carrier. Though the B-25 never seen combat before, Lieutenant Colonel James Doolittle had faith in them. The bombers took off from the Hornet on 18th of April 1942, and after about 6 hours of flight arrived over Tokyo, bombed their targets, then continued east to land in China. Most of them crash landed before reaching the landing sites though, as they had to take off prematurely about 170 miles further from Japan, when the carrier force was spotted by a Japanese ship. The bombing had little effect on the Japanese targets, but gave a boost to the American morale. During the war, the B-25s took part in most major operations in the Pacific Theater, fighting in New Guinea, the Solomon Islands, China, Burma, and almost every part of the island hopping campaign. As in the jungle, the medium and high altitude bombing was not effective, low level attacks were the main form of engagement. And the B-25 with its formidable firepower excelled in this. The missions included strafing enemy installments and airfields, and dropping parachute retarded bombs called parafrags. The B-25s were also used in Europe and in the Middle East. The Mitchells arrived in North Africa in October 1942 and were used heavily to attack enemy airfields and convoys. Later they participated in the invasion of Sicily and the Italian campaign, used as ground attackers again. Other Allied countries also used the B-25 in Europe. The British received 900 units and the French Air Force also used them after the invasion of Normandy. 
They were also delivered to the Soviet Union through the Land Lease Program. The Soviet forces received 862 B-25s and deployed them as close air support and tactical bombers, and they were in use up until the end of the war. As most of the bomber force, after the war the majority of the B-25s were decommissioned, but some of them stayed in service through the 1950s in reconnaissance and training roles. The B-25 was truly the most versatile medium bomber of the war, used as a bomber, gunship, ground attacker and in anti-ship role as well. They fought in every theater of the war and contributed to the Allied victory greatly. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please leave a like, subscribe to my channel and in the comments let me know if there's any interesting events or vehicles you'd like to see.